Welcome to the Fan Counter Celebrity Podcast. My name's Nick. And I'm Elizabeth. And you can find us on social media. If you're following along, go to Twitter. Look up Fan Counters Live. If you want to search us on Facebook, you can go to Sharpie Nation or just search Fan Counters and join our big group. And you can keep up with the show there. Elizabeth, it's the first week in December. I've had my tree up now three weeks. I know. <laughs> but look, but the, mine's been up for a week, so I'm, I'm all right. Right. Well, you have to understand here in Wisconsin, winter came on October 31st. Right. We had a freezing ice and uh, snowstorm. We trick-or-treated in winter jackets and snow pants. And ours got canceled. Oh, wow. Did it get rescheduled? Yeah, like that following weekend, which was just snow and rain anyway. <laughs> so the weather's been, you know, super lovely here, and that's why we've had our tree up. But anyway, we want to thank you for, for tuning in this week. Before we get to today's show, I have to tell you about my dad. He, unfortunately, fell victim to a scam. Oh, And I'm no. not bringing this up to embarrass him. I'm bringing it up because we can create some public awareness for the seniors in your lives. If you have elderly parents or if you are elderly yourself, I don't know who's listening, you'll want to watch out for this scam. Uh, somebody calls and they have information on you. Like they know your name, they know where you live, they know the last four digits of your social, and they have all this information. And they call very angrily threatening you. Now the story they used with my dad, it said uh, somebody has rented a car in Dallas with your name and it's been pulled over by the police and there's marijuana inside. And what you need to do is you need to liquidate your assets now because uh, they're going to be seized tomorrow. Okay. So he went to the bank and he took out $5,000, which was his liquid available money. And I, I never really got the correlation to how they made him get gift cards. Apparently, he was supposed to buy these gift cards. Oh, I've heard about this game. Give him the numbers. Gift cards. And, and then, then a guy is supposed to come on Saturday with a check for $5,000 to re replace the money. Obviously, yeah. the guy's never going to come. Right. But so that, you know, his money is not interrupted and the Social Security doesn't stop and all this. And he fell hook, line, and sinker. Oh, shucks. He was on the phone with these people for five hours. <gasps> Running around town, going to the bank. Not one store asked him, sir, why are you buying these gift cards? And while he's on the phone the whole time, I wish somebody would have helped him out and, and said, sir, you know, I'm not going to make this transaction until you hang up your phone, you know, because then that would have been right there. Right. That would have stopped the situation. So anyway, he's out the money uh, all because of a phone scam. And unfortunately, that is you know, getting to be more and more prevalent with people stalking your information and, and thinking they have something on you. So, um, Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give this out that. guys. Here's the number. If you want to call the scam number and, and, uh, you know, or be wary, the number they called from was four, four, three, two, three, one, three, eight, four, eight. And, uh, it was an Essex, Maryland number. I just don't get how he fell for it, but, you know, they well, can be pretty convincing and threatening, yeah. and I think that's what got him. My mother-in-law has a Corning Owen basement room that she never goes down in because they told her that she would get a great deal and they'd put a sign in their yard, and and she bought it and paid for a huge room in her basement, and she uses an electric chair to go up and down the stairs anyway, so she doesn't go in the basement. What is a Corning electric room? A uh, Corning, Owen Corning, you know, like not, it, they just built a room out of like that white corrugated board that they just put up. Like Because it's, it's an unfinished basement? It's an unfinished basement and now she has a finished room with a closet, but because there's no like door to the outside, it's not a legal bedroom. So yeah. she just paid all this money to have a room that she physically doesn't. Why did she think she wanted that? Um, I think they made it sound like it was such a great deal and that it would increase the value of her oh, house. Right, right. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, be wary of the phone scams out there and tell the older people in your lives about this situation so they can avoid it for themselves. Yes. I would hate for our listeners and their families and friends to be losing money on a scam like this. And uh, if you have a good harassment call and you want to call those people, um, we'll, you know, we'd love to hear yeah. what might happen. Anyway, let's move on to the show today. Our PSA is over. Yeah. 20 years ago, The Blair Witch Project came out with a bang. And while it wasn't the first found footage film ever made, it did breathe new life into that genre. Today, we're going to be talking to the actors and directors and creators of She Walks the Woods, which is an open love letter to both the genre and The Blair Witch Project. 
It has much of the same premise, but it's delivered in a brand new way. The film is made by twin brothers Scotty and Danny Bowen, who also host a very popular podcast called the Cult Classic Horror Show Podcast. She Walks the Woods is available now on Amazon Prime. All right, let's get to it. Here are Scotty and Danny Bowen. Coming to you from nowhere near the entertainment capital of the world, this is Fan Counters with Nick and Elizabeth on the Podfix Network. There was this mob of people, and they're screaming my name. Crazy fans. Stop following me. Don't come around my house. If you do, the cops are going to be at yours. If I'm having dinner with my wife, don't sit down at my table. Don't follow me into the bathroom. Can I take a picture? We're gonna, oh, my God. I think this guy wants to fight me. Ended up being a fan. I'm the only one that's ever been on Sam Jackson and lived to tell about it. <laughs> well, guess what? I have a big surprise for you. That's why we call it Fan Counters. <laughs> I don't think you're going to last on the air very long. <laughs> Danny and Scotty, welcome to Fan Counters. Thanks for being here. How are you? Nick, thanks for having us, man. We're, I'm doing good. Are you doing good? Doing man? great. I'm doing awesome. <laughs> Thank you for having us, Nick. We're, we're uh, happy to be here. This is going to be fun. Yeah. It, it will be fun because you guys are twin brothers. I told you uh, before we started that I had twin daughters. So uh, I feel like you're going to be on the same wave, wavelength for a lot of things. But I've got a challenge at the end of this interview, and we'll see how you do with that. Ooh, oh, now I'm nervous. I'm, I'm ready. nervous the whole time. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we talked about Always your film up. in the opening, She Walks the Woods, and it's available now on Amazon Prime, so it's definitely one to go check out. But I want to start with this first question. When I started to do the research in preparation to talk to you, I found where you started this film, and it was actually a Kickstarter that you had, which was uh, you had a goal of fifty nine hundred dollars, but ended up raising close to fifteen thousand dollars. What do you attribute yeah. to the success of that? The Kickstarter is a funny story, and uh, maybe uh, so. This is Danny talking, by the way, for you guys listening. Just so may- maybe there's a glimmer of hope that you can tell us apart. <laughs> yeah, and this is Scotty. My my voice might be a little bit lower, but yeah, I know. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although he's not more manly, I just want to put that out. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <brother>. Um, <laughs> So this Kickstarter actually was done um, after the movie was made. We we self-funded this entire thing, uh, and then sort of in the back of our heads, we had thought, hey, maybe we should do some type of crowdfunding after the fact just to recoup some funds and, and to help with marketing help with, expenses. Help with post-production. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and so we uh, didn't think seriously about it. In fact, I don't even know if we were going to do it. Like, I, I had no experience with Kickstarter or any crowdfunding for that matter. And I was just going to throw up a campaign and let it run. And of course, I don't even think we would have met that $5,000 goal. But uh, uh, luckily, one of our, our good friends now and um, now is a co host on our podcast, we have a, a podcast that reviews horror movies. Um, he's sort of um, an expert at, at that. He, he, on the side, he's a lawyer by day, but on the side, he runs Kickstarters for businesses um he also owns a comic book shop and so a lot of graphic novels self-published people making comic books artists he'll do kickstarters for them and and take a small cut and so he uh he ran the whole thing for us he had all i didn't know any of this terminology he had um you know our uh goals and and we gave away you know giveaways at each stretch goal and kept the people in in engaged and, yeah, and, and stuff too so we really owe it to him for the success uh I, I would mainly give it to his name's carmelo chimera check him out chimera's comics we owe a lot of the success to him uh but then i we also have to thank our podcast fan base um because they came out and showed up and and really put some you know d- d- pledge to that and then i also want to thank just a few random uh, people in the film industry in Denver stepped forward that I never even knew before and even gave at the higher levels just because they wanted to support indie film in Denver. So that yeah. was really awesome. Too. Yeah. So yeah. that's I would that's what I would attribute it to. Yeah, that is a great story. And I would never have guessed that that happened after the film was completed. So very cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely you know nice what? to help you know uh, promote it a little bit. Yeah. So. You know what, Nick? I think it helped us because normally you run a Kickstarter and, you, you know, you have to have some kind of material where – Hey, we got to show them a little clip or some artwork. Well, by this time we had, you know, ten different cover arts and a completed trailer and even the opening sequence done. So we had all this material that we could use to advertise the Kickstarter and give away as bonuses as well. 
Well, the other thing you could do is guarantee that they would get a copy of the film, unlike a lot of projects that I have even funded that never even happened. So at least they knew sure. they were giving money to something they were actually going to see. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And I, it's not, um, I guess, normal, but we're going to do the same thing with our, our next production that we're, that we're going to do. I think we're going to wait till we're going to fund it. Then we're gonna, in post, we're going to try and recoup or at least know mm-hmm. that we have another little chunk coming in for marketing purposes yeah and 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 it was really cool because some of the people that did donate to the kickstarter did get producer credits within she walks the woods and uh um you know they get to see their name on the end on the end of the film there yeah. so it was, or the beginning depending or, on how much or, they gave or at the <laughs> beginning so it was really cool that they got the that. credits i should say yeah film. yeah <laughs> yeah so that was that was kind of really cool too um and actually carmelo who helped us we he we met him through the horror fan base group he just you know was like one of the fans and then we kind of then he just you know just came out of nowhere and just helped us out so that was really we we're very thankful for that too where did the idea come from and why this spo- story why did it speak to you what 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 is it about this project that makes you want to do it uh, oh gosh yeah i'll let you go for this plenty of stories here <laughs> or we could both kind of elaborate on it yeah no we i'm sure we will end up doing so so this this story um was sort of originated by another friend of ours who's also a co-host on our podcast. We just we're a collaborative effort here. Um, yeah, we talk a lot. Robert O'Neill, uh, he's credited as one of the writers on the film. He had come up with this story idea probably uh, almost a couple of years before we decided and, and used it for filming. This all sort of ties into the whole process of pre-production on this film. Um, we had initially had more money at the beginning. And, and a whole different yeah. uh, idea for another film. Yeah, we were going to spend more, uh, make it a, a bigger production, not found footage. We had a whole other script. Uh, and honestly, the we were working with some people that um, it just wasn't happening fast enough. The location wasn't coming through fast enough. Uh, and, and we were basically funding this by ourselves. Uh, Scotty and I were had a couple people helping out, but um, we, we sort of ran out of money. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, our business took a little bit of a, a dark time. It's, it's not so bad now anymore, but it, it was just up and down, and so we we didn't have enough for this big production that we had, and, and we had a we had a script done, and like we were yeah. really ready, like okay, well maybe not anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we were all yeah we were like amped and ready to go, and it, it just didn't happen, and we were seeing everything died down, fearing that we wouldn't be able to do anything, and so we said we got to put something out. So we we just went back to to Rob's story that he had, which was based on um, and a lot of people have pointed this out already. Really, it's based on uh, sort of a documentary called The Missing 411. Actually, I shouldn't say documentary. I think they just made one that's on yeah. Amazon Prime that I haven't watched yet. But uh, this guy wrote a series of books, and uh, forgive me, I don't even remember the guy's name, but he wrote a series of books called uh, Missing 411, and it's about these true stories of people that have gone hiking or have been out picnicking and have just straight up disappeared in the wilderness. Wow. And either just like our beginning uh title card show in the film they've either been completely lost and never found or their bodies have been found in awkward places like Mm. no shoes 12 miles away on a mountaintop or they were found but have like a blank memory from that time or something and so there's all these actual conspiracy theories about is it aliens is it the government is it this or that and uh we just picked out one of those that mm-hmm. uh and made it our own like hey it's it's this creature that roams the woods and uh picks off hikers you know this is what's causing it and uh so the story was born uh, out of that we liked it we wanted to use it but at the same time we had to use something really fast we live in colorado near the mountains we had a family friend with this creepy cabin location that he said we could use for free and uh we had a camera buddy and rented some minor equipment and just went up and did it literally we put it together like all of it within like a week like like hey let's do this this yeah. that and then oh, obviously it took longer than that to get everything together but I, yeah, the I idea think, came together like just so so quickly i think what we did was when we realized we were running out of funds and had to do something we just said hey um let's let's just schedule the filming dates and then we scheduled them like 35 days later and then we put everything together in that 35 days and got it done. It, it was really quick. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's nothing like a timeline to make you hustle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. That's what, that's what it did for sure. How much of that film was improv versus scripted? Because a lot of the cuts are very long. So 
you had to either be really familiar with your lines or you're ad libbing a little bit. So talk to me a little bit about how it was scripted versus what you came up with on the spot. Sure. Um, I would have to say uh, 70 to 75 percent of it was 85, maybe 85 maybe percent <laughs> was not scripted. OK, um, so we had a basic outline. We had, um, you know, a 10 page, 15 page outline of what we wanted to actually do. Um, so we had a shot by shot list um, for each scene. And uh, we knew what we had to get across for those scenes and what had to happen. But most of it was like, okay, this, this, and this needs to get a point during, during this scene. These things need to happen. Go for it. You know? So, okay, we know this, this needs to be talked about. This needs to happen. And we improv all that. We just, we, yeah. it just whatever came to us. Um, so, yeah, uh, a lot of it was improv. I, I would say that we learned some lessons this oh, yeah. time around, though, because... It was hard. <laughs> uh, what, when I watched the film, and I've got a little bit of feedback from some people that um, I, I think a couple of the parts that are scripted are almost too obviously scripted. Whereas the improv was working well and we were sort of just flowing with it, it was and, more or organic. Yeah, yeah. And so it, it's uh, if we, if we ever were to do that again, I think I, I, it's one or the other, let's go no, totally non-scripted with this scene outline or let's go scripted and yeah. make sure that we really nail it, you know? Yeah. Cause, cause there was, there were a few scenes that we had actual written dialogue. Um, some of some of the stuff we had to go film, go back and film and, yeah. um, and then just a few uh, key key points within the movie that we just wanted to get these exact lines across, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, a lot of it, yeah, was just on on the fly of just us just bantering. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the film follows three friends, and there's a budding romance, and you pick up a fourth one. They kind of have a very easy sort of repertoire amongst them. Are are they all real life friends or? Is this just really good um, casting? No, we um, we're all friends. Okay. So the the story that we all know each other yeah. from <laughs> we all know each other from a um, a film acting workshop in Denver that we usually go to about once a week, uh, and so that's how we all met and pulled from. That's uh, Jason Potter who plays Dennis, who's the the camera guy mm-hmm. in the film and in real life he's an actual camera operator and he's editor. the editor and did all the picture sound yeah. design he did, and yeah he did so he, all that yeah. so he's uh just had been a friend of ours for a few years uh vivian was a little bit newer we'd only known her for about uh six months yeah. maybe a little bit longer but uh had been attending some some workshops with her uh and so yeah even the the guys that we had direct there are the instructors and the owners of that workshop uh and the only people that we really brought in that we didn't already know and have a friendship with was the FX team, uh, monster makeup effects out of Atlanta. Um, just so that, cause we wanted, that's where we wanted to spend our money was on the practical effects. And since we brought them in though, they're great. And now we're friends with them and, uh, they'll be working with us again. Yeah. But yeah, it was definitely good chemistry, especially between me and me and Danny or da- Danny and I, and then, um, with Jason and Vivian too, yeah. we, we all, knew each other so it definitely flowed and a lot same better. with uh i know there's no real um interaction but same with jesse who played she quote unquote um she's a really good friend of ours as well so it was all it was a fun time on set for sure yeah okay we didn't really have to hold like a casting call for it yeah. we kind of just you know picked grabbed people your friends <laughs> okay i wanted to talk a little bit about hope because we living in wisconsin really appreciated the reference around the campfire when she's telling her story and mentions wisconsin so are there any Wisconsin ties in your lives that we should know about? You know, not personally. Obviously, <laughs> uh, those stories around the campfire, those are real. So, Vivian, those are real stories. Okay. Um, any Anything told in the, in the film is real. I, I know it seems like it matches the story where Hope is sort of guiding us and giving us the tour of her property and saying, oh, these people up and left, mm-hmm. and they left all this stuff here. Uh, that really fits in with our story really well because – you know, we just saw this scene of, of people getting slaughtered and we maybe assume it's them or we assume that something similar happened to them. Uh, when in actuality, the guy that we that let us use his land had a renters that just up and left and left all that junk up there. Yes. So you it know. is sort of true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it worked. And her family is, she's 
from some of her family is from Wisconsin. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Too. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. she has some ties there. But too. no, yeah. yeah, no real ties for us. Yeah. Yeah. We've we've been there. Yeah. I have a, I have a friend that's from there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was there a real romance between? Um, I just know her character as Hope and and the guy. Did they improv that? Uh, it was it was definitely improv. I'm not saying that there. He wishes. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, oh, there, there is. It was, it was totally improv. But um, and and it is. It's it's sort of um. So that well, I got to hand it to Jason because Vivian hadn't actually plays, been around for a while. Who plays Dennis? Yeah, who plays Dennis, Dennis Copley? Uh, Vivian lives in in Los Angeles, and we we actually flew her in for that. But she had grown up in Fort Collins and. <laughs> had attended that workshop in Denver for a while, so that's how we knew her. So she wasn't really even around for the four or five months before we filmed this. Really. And, and and that romance scene was actually not in the initial uh, initial outline of the script. That was something we actually kind of added at the last minute. Yeah. And um, we actually uh, only had three guys in it to begin with, but then we added the female part. Yeah. Um, which which really I think it made it made made it made the movie better and it then we add, oh it definitely yeah. made it better and then, yeah. and then we and then we added uh, that that well, kind of love that, making that was scene. our director Brian McCauley. Um he's he's very in the vein of we got to have some kind of partial nudity for these young kids to which, watch which I'm glad <laughs> you know it kind of draws the viewer in I, yeah, I think for that yeah. part yeah well it worked because yeah. they were very comfortable with it which is why I asked I thought well if they're actually in a relationship that would work really well improv but what was funny was yeah. the, the two of you were inside the house snickering like middle school boys which that was kind of funny yeah we were <laughs> yeah we were just <laughs> we definitely uh, improv all all that too they just well the the director was like okay just be in here and you don't think this is going to happen but then all of a sudden it, it happens the very first night and do whatever you guys want it I'm was like, a, okay it was a definite <laughs> character choice scotty, scotty was the douche the, you know quote unquote the douchebag yeah and uh was supposed to have that type of humor and and you know me being his brother in the film mike being brad's brother joins in here and there but it feels is ultimately a little bit above that <laughs> yeah yeah i'm 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 like the party guy and the one that just uh doesn't give a crap and wants to have a fun time one review of the movie that we read praised the sound the creature makes and it does stand out for us as an amazing job well done who gets the credit for that sound creation that's all uh, Jason Potter, who played Dennis in the film. Yeah, he's, like I said, this was a, a small production, so he, if you look through the credits, I mean, he's... His name is in there yeah, a lot. He's, <laughs> a, he's an actor who plays Dennis. He's the technically the DP, even though we all took turns holding the camera, and Scotty probably ended up with it most of the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's also just the editor in general, and then did sound design as well, so... Okay. It, it, he he gets the full credit, and honestly, he surprised the hell out of us with it. it yes, yeah. you know, I couldn't have been happier. It was he did a few short things and a few hel- helping jobs on other feature films, but this was well, the first one he had all to him to himself yeah. and really you know, took the helm and, and and created all those sounds. He created most of the sounds from scratch too. Yeah, he's in his uh, basement studio. He said he was tapping pool cues on the windows and wow, uh, nice. doing all kinds of crap with that. Yeah, creepy. Yeah. He did say that the scream is a mixture of like eight different things that he found. Okay. So, yeah, it's, that, that's it's nice. Good. Hopefully, it was unique to people hearing it too, because yeah, it definitely is a, a blood curdling scream. <laughs> it stands out. It's very, very well done. We talked, guys. We talked about in the opening that you guys are twin brothers, and it was interesting to find out that your parents actually owned a dinner theater in Colorado, and you acted in many of those productions. Is that kind of how your Act, interest in acting and producing started was right there uh, with your your folks. Yes, so we do. Um, we did start acting through theater uh, as young boys. We were, I guess, our first role was Tiny Tim when we were both like five years old. Uh, but and there's still the the theater theater still there today, and it's still going strong. Uh, and um, but yeah, we definitely we've been doing theater our whole life, and. We have always loved film throughout that process, especially in our uh, older years. Um, I would say that it definitely has helped a lot. The transition going to film from theater, though, uh, I don't know. It kind of just happened. Like, Danny was yeah, in it first. Dan- I... Danny started doing film first, and then I kind of, like a year later, um, you know, followed his footsteps. Um, but I, I know that theater acting helps me 
you know, it helps me kind of keep that craft, you know. It was, uh, if you're talking specifically about acting, Scotty, I mean, it was a difficult transition to um, oh, yeah. become a decent at film acting because it's so much different than theater acting. It's it's just a whole different page. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it has been hard. As yeah. far as being interested in film and acting, um, Growing up in the theater was almost not by choice, of course. They had this business before we were, or as we were born. And honestly, in high school, we it was the last place we wanted to be. Yeah. We, we were out uh, riding BMX bikes, dirt jumping, and uh, we uh, that was middle school a lot, high school, partying a lot. We had a we had a, a heavy metal rock band. Death metal band, know, which we actually still have. We but, oh, we're going to so. talk about that in a uh, we, second. We did, yeah, you're gonna bring that. Up. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Right? That's my next question. So hang tight. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So we we just it was almost the last place we wanted to be. We did we took part in no theater work in high school at all. Like at our at our local high school, it was it was stupid, you know. And and when we ever had to be at the theater, it was stupid. And so it wasn't until I think we were out of high school that we finally started enjoying a couple of the roles that we got and enjoying the singing and acting and and, and um, really loving it. Yeah. Yeah, and then. That even since middle school, high school, we were both huge movie buffs. Uh, our dad was a huge movie buff. Uh, all, he was a big action buff and horror as well, but huge movie buffs and um, always wanted to to like be an actor in films, but never thought it was possible. And then we achieved some things out of high school in our business that we were like, you know what, things are possible. Let's just do it. And so we just honestly started doing it. We had always wanted to do it, but we just didn't think it was possible. And then just said, let's do it and started doing it. Yeah. But, yep. Yep. Exactly. I think how you felt in high school is pretty common even right now, because I do a lot of local productions in theater and film, and it's way easier to get girls to be involved in theater performances and being on screen in film. And it's very hard to find boys when you're looking for teenage boys. Like you, oh, yeah. they're they're very, very nowhere to, to be find. found, right? People are like, "Why <laughs> yeah. do you have girls in your film all the time?" Because that's who does it, you know. <laughs> that's who shows up to the casting call. Well, and they yeah, don't realize exactly. they don't realize that like all my girlfriends through middle school and high school were because of that theater. So you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and and still to this day, uh, my wife, yeah, yeah. The the uh, the 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 theater's always looking for for guys. So there's so always plenty of girls there. Yeah. But then me and me and Danny get the call. Like, hey, can you guys be in the show? Can you guys fill in here? Uh, yeah. Like, you don't yeah. have enough guys this time again? Okay, whatever. We, yeah, to this day, they, they were wanting us bad to do uh, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers starting in, in January yeah. or February, but we're that's when we're planning to shoot our next project. So Whew, like, thank goodness for that. It. <laughs> like, I can maybe be double casted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys stay very busy, and you're in a band called Poolside at the Flamingo. Uh, it's described yeah. as grindcore. I have no idea what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, the way that I, in layman's terms, I usually just say death metal, but really it's just uh, a real dynamic, really heavy metal style that's fairly, I, I say underground to, to the main population, but if, if you're like a metalhead, you, you'll know and you'll enjoy a lot of it, you know. So. Yeah, it's very entertaining. It's, it's really fast at times and it's really slow at and times. We, and as you can tell by the name, we do not take ourselves seriously. Our song names <laughs> yeah. are ridiculous. When you see us live, we're just having a good time. We're, we're smiling. You know? It's all about having fun and like entertaining the audience, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm up there screaming my head off and Danny's, you know, playing the guitar and you know, jumping around and stuff, and it's it's definitely just a good time. We like yeah. to entertain the crowd. Now, are you in costume when you're performing? No. Okay. No, definitely not. Uh, this last <laughs> Halloween, we actually well, were, but... for Halloween shows. Why yeah. not? We all dressed up as nuns on Halloween. Yeah. But... <laughs> you you talked about us keeping busy. It it has with like the band and uh, the podcast and doing doing the films and all the acting, even even theater still too. It it, it does keep really really busy. So we're like, oh, you know what, the band, uh, you know, we've been doing it. Off and on since we were in high school, so it's it's just like wow, we we might need to like cut one of these down one yeah, of, one we, of these we days. Did to, <laughs> we did hit we did hit the road twice last year with the band, and uh, we'll see how much we do that in the in the future. It's it's fun and entertaining, uh, but yeah, it's just you know you have to choose your priorities. Mm-hmm. That's all. The podcast is called the Cult Classic Horror Show podcast. I actually sampled that show over the last couple of days, having a very particular oh. interest in the Poltergeist movies. That's where I started my journey on your show. You weren't very kind to the film Poltergeist 3, but that's okay. I'll still be friends with you. But tell us a little bit about your show. 
<laughs> it's better than the remake, right? <laughs> yeah, I I love Poltergeist one. That was that was. Yeah. But I I like oh, I like the mediator. I like lo- I I like see the good in like everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, this show uh, has been a weird thing in our lives. I tell you what, we we started it totally by accident, and it's just been a thing for the last five, almost five years now. I think we we basically. Uh, we, so Scotty and I are very, we're entrepreneurs. We were very business minded. We initially started in network marketing, which is, I do not recommend to anybody, <laughs> you know, no one does. <laughs> yeah. Um, but through, unless you have a neck for it. Yeah. But through that, we met some cool people and then got into, um, like e-commerce and selling things online. And so through, through that, we had joined a mastermind where they're sort of expensive, and you go fly out and you go to these masterminds and you events. Know, events. And Someone's we've, teaching, and we've you been learn these, a lot of those. You learn these ninja marketing strategies. But well, why I'm telling you all this is while we were there, there was a guy that we met who was super cool, and his business is that he builds personal brands. So he's mainly for like self help people. So if you want to write your own motivational book, he will like guide you through that process, help you publish the book and help you build your brand through podcasts and everything like that afterwards. And he's actually very well off and good at what he does. And, uh, we had just like had lunch with him one day cause we were all at this event and he, um, he was so like psyched about our interest in horror and we had been selling horse type memorabilia and things. And he said, Oh, you guys got to start a podcast. You have to start a podcast. We're like podcasts. We're what? like, huh? And there's there's podcasts. He's like, oh, <laughs> he's like, I'll partner with you guys, and and we'll use my team to launch it. And and I'd never even listened to podcasts before. Like I knew what they were, but never listened to them. And, and yeah, so we got back from this event, and and his team put put all this stuff in motion. And then we we started creating content, and we're like, all right, let's just do it. And we just started doing it, and it's evolved. It's gotten much better and evolved and much, a lot. And much bigger, yeah, than, yeah we, since, than, we, than we ever thought yeah, would. Since that time. And, and so now we're, we're um, happy that we have it and hoping to utilize it to further our, our film endeavor, and, of course. And, and we have, yeah, and we have, a, we have a fun time. You know, we get to watch a movie every week and something maybe that we, haven't, that we wouldn't have watched ever, you know. And yeah. uh, so it's cool to watch those movies and then dig deep and, you know, get all the facts for it and just just tell the people about it. So and Nick, like you said before, like uh, we would not have had the response on Kickstarter. We wouldn't have the support we have now if we didn't have that podcast. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, it's funny though. I do appreciate the fact that your show does not just read through in a wiki page as you're talking about these movies. You yeah. actually do deep dive and uh, look at how these things are made and how special effects are done and and different tidbits about the movie. So I have to give you props for really. Like we do on this show, we do our research. Yeah. We don't just, uh, you know, fluff it. And uh, you guys do the oh, same yeah. thing that, over there at the Cult Classic Horror Show. I will admit, Nick, that that is one Thank of the you. ways it has gotten better. If you start, you know what? In the beginning, we covered like some franchises near and dear to us that we already knew a lot about and owned some things on. So those get pretty deep dive. But when you go in the middle of our catalog, like you know, episode fifty to hundred, there might be some. There might be some wiki read throughs, some IMDBs, <laughs> and a lot of opinions. Yeah. Uh, but over the last, I don't know, 50, 60 episodes, we've really committed. And every week we plan it out and we, we make sure if there's like a steel book or a Blu ray or something that has five featurettes and three commentaries, that one of us buys it and watches all of that shit. And then we cover it. Yep. I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> and we cover all of it, you know? So it works. Yeah, yeah. And we always bounce off each other. And, you know, you're. You're taking this part. You're taking this part, and it's it definitely has been more of a structured outline for it. Yeah. So it's so it's been nice. So what do you guys have coming down the pike? What what projects are up next? Well, uh, yeah, we, I, we got a lot of things. I mentioned already that uh, we we are shooting something January February. So we have the we have the dates already. Um, the script is getting finalized right now. Um, we this one will be a narrative, not a found footage film. Okay, we want to show people that you know we can that we're going to get better as we go this, that we learned a lot from shoebox yeah, the woods and, you, know. you know i'm not taking anything away from shoebox the woods i actually am a huge found footage genre fan myself like yeah. i know some people yeah, hate okay. it and stay away from it but i love it and so to me as a fan of the genre um i like shoebox the woods but i understand that some people don't and it's not their cup of tea and even some people that only like big budget found footage might not even like it but um, so yeah, we wanted to, but, but that was cause we wanted to push something out. We wanted to get it done. We wanted to get it out there and just, 
uh, establish ourselves as filmmakers, you know? And so moving forward, we have another project that we'll probably, we're spending like three to four times as much on. It's going to be an actual narrative film. Um, it's, it's scripted dialogue, although there's a unique twist in which our lead character can't really talk for most of the film has her jaw wired shut. So that'll be, that's a little Ooh, tidbit. Okay. Um, and yeah, we're, so yeah, we're moving onwards and upwards. We're going to be using the same effects team. So a lot of practical effects, we may just to pretty some things up, do some digital this time around. Uh, there's all practical in Shoebox the Woods, uh, but this will still be, 95 percent practical effects maybe replacing a, a couple wires or adding a blood splatter here and there with the yeah digital. and it, it, it's um, cool we're, we're we're gonna have a bigger crew a bigger cast and stuff so it's just kind of you know a stepping stone to the next next thing that you know that we have that we had an idea for and now we can you know put it in motion and, and, and this is the kind of pace yeah. that we want to work at and we'll definitely with she walks the woods it had taken us so long to finally complete a project that we just want to get out there and so really we did just take uh one of the first distributors that was interested in us and just said yeah that's great just please get it out of streaming put it on amazon prime let's just get this thing out there and get it going and move on and with this next project we're definitely going to be um aiming a little bit higher like trying to to do the whole festival circuit um seeing if we can't get some mid-level or top tier distribution and maybe get on netflix and just see what we can do, um, you know, with, with something a little bit higher end or a little bit bigger budget. Yeah, take our time with all the avenues that we have access to and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. But that being said, we would like to, once that's complete, we'd like to just turn around and start working on another one. And we're hoping that if we just keep the drive going and we're able to do these smaller indie productions that at some point maybe someone with a lot of money or some studio will recognize that there's some there's some golden eggs here and there, or they like one of our films, and and we'll get some real money to work with, or Scotty and I will just get to work as actors. That's that's why we really got into all this. Does yeah. the upcoming one have a title you want to get out there, or is that still confidential? Oh, uh, we do. I can. I I suppose. Yeah. It's yeah. a working title. We're pretty. I'm like ninety. I'm like ninety percent sure we're going to use it. Okay. I said seventy five. He said ninety. No, I love <laughs> the title. It's called a uh, Sin Eater. Ah, okay. Sin as yeah. in S I N or as in C I N? Nope, S I N Eater. And uh it if you you can google that and there's actual lore behind it and uh okay. I can give you a brief little it's basically has to do I can read the little summary if you want. Uh, you don't have to read the summary. Okay. That's really long. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, not, just like the, the uh, little, Yeah, hit the highlights. Pitch. <laughs> if you if you have a small pitch, you can read it. But I thought okay. we just had a long one. I don't know. Uh, we there's there's a small one in here. But if you want to, while while I find it, I can. Now it's basically a um, a film centered around a town that is all a small town that's basically a cult that um, takes in this visitor who's injured on their outside roads and uh, uh yeah, some stuff goes down. And <laughs> I, I guess I don't want to give away too much. No, you don't want to give it away. Okay. Not this early. Yeah. No. Yeah. But it's a supernatural uh, cult thriller. Here, That's I have, perfect. I have just the elevator pitch here. Okay, here's the How about just an elevator pitch? All okay. Right. When a woman on, on the run from her past suffers a terrifying injury, she becomes stranded in a town with a dark secret. As bizarre phenomena intensify, and with no one to trust, she'll have to face her inner demons before a real one takes her soul. Ooh. There it is. Okay, there. that's that sells it way. Yeah, more. yeah, that was a better description. Yeah. Very good. That was better than what I was trying. To <laughs> there we go. Yeah, just a short yeah. and sweet. Little, you should little, keep little, that uh, handy. Little, little <laughs> yeah, but I'm excited for for you guys to check that out. We got this this totally refurbished 1910 house in Denver that we're going to be using as our main location, and then we have a super creepy basement with bare light bulbs that is our other location, and we'll do some exterior. So it's, it's going to be good. Awesome. So, yeah. Everything is in the process right now. Now, is Denver where both Denver. of you live? Yeah, we technically yeah. live um, about 40 minutes north of Denver, uh, outside of Longmont. Okay, yeah, I know. So, yeah, near Boulder. Okay, yeah. yeah. I went to Regis College. Yeah. Well, now it's university, but oh, okay. I went oh, Regis. to Regis. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm a Regis grad. Oh, I know awesome. the area yeah, well. Yeah. So you... So you lived here for uh, for a little bit. Then. I did. I lived out there for five or six years before the. But I'm pretty old, so the <laughs> oil market dropped, <laughs> and I needed to leave because there were no jobs. 
Sure. Understandable. Uh, yeah. In the early 90s, late 70s, or late 80s, early 90s, when the oil dropped, there were like just nothing to do. So yeah. I yeah. Un- ended up coming back here. Gosh. You know, where, where, where is here? Are, are you guys in California right now? We're in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, yeah duh. You already did. said that. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, we're yeah, right we're outside in, Milwaukee. Yeah, we're in Wisconsin. Oh, nice. oh, that's great. Heck yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's why our, our tagline is nowhere near the entertainment capital of right. the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you uh, know what? I mean, we're a little closer. Being Denver's a little yes. bit more of a metropolis, but still, we're, we still struggle to find uh you know a lot of crew and things out here every everyone who is here denver's a big commercial market so everyone's used to doing these huge commercials and that it costs millions of dollars mm-hmm. and, and their day rates are all like two thousand dollars you know so <laughs> to getting them to do indie films is a little bit tough yeah yeah <laughs> same Trying sort of market here back yeah mm-hmm. yeah all right, before we let you go we have a horror version of would you rather that we want to play with you Ooh. So, Scotty, I'm going to always have you answer first, okay? I'm going to put you on the spot okay. just so we know who's got the answer, and then Danny will go second, okay? All right. Sounds good. All right, so uh, how many did I pick? I think I picked out six of them, so uh, here we go. You cannot change the time or method of your death, so would you rather know when you're going to die or how you're going to die? Oh, my God, that is so weird. Um, <laughs> I would say... I don't want to know. I, I would rather know how, just so I'm I'm prepared. Yes. So how? Mm, I'm I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna say how. I don't. Uh, if I knew when, I would just be counting down the days. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great, how great I question. feel about it. Yeah. That one was in yep. true countdown style. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but that was a supernatural movie about counting down till you know when you're gonna die. And I enjoyed. Oh, it. Yeah. I enjoyed it greatly. That's too much I saw, information. I don't want to know that. I saw. It. I saw that that was like where it transfers between like their iPhones and like yes, no, it's that an was, app. That was, uh, that was the Timberlake one. Oh yeah, yeah. No, but or this not, was an app that, was... that they download, and then it tells you, uh, you know, Yo, counts yeah. down to your death. Yeah. yeah All right. I yep. No, I, I saw the preview for it. Yeah. Okay. It's, right. yes, it is. okay. It's yeah, so worth it. It is the countdown. Yep. Okay. Got so the next one the is: Would you rather be locked in a room that is constantly dark for a week, or a room that is constantly bright for a week? Ooh, that's tough. Um, I would have to say, so I definitely cannot sleep with the light on. I just have a problem with that. Uh, so I would definitely rather be in the dark so I can get caught up on sleep and, uh, yeah, just caught, just, just be in the dark. Okay. I think I would, I think I would rather do dark as well because for, for sleep reasons, but also I feel like I would take that time to, maybe meditate or become self-aware and that would be easier in the dark. Would you rather have the police hunting you for a murder you did not commit or a psychopathic clown hunting you? Oh God. Um, I would have to say the police just cause I fear that the psychopath clown might just chop my head off or something. Right. So I'd rather be locked up behind bars and try to plea my case with the police. Okay. Um, I would pick the clown. Oh. Actually, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm like, I I used to be an MMA fighter. I used to train jujitsu, and so I feel like if a clown ran up on me, I I'd be able to take him out. And it might be fun to beat up a clown or shoot yeah. a clown. All right, Elizabeth is going to do the last one, and since you chose clown, Ugh. Danny, we're going to give you another clown one. Would you rather have a clown only you can see that follows you everywhere and just stands silently in the corner watching you without doing or saying anything, or would you like to have a real life stalker who dresses like the Easter Bunny that everyone can see? Oh wow! Gosh, um, I'd probably go with the Easter Bunny. Look at me, uh, just because it wouldn't be as creepy and if. If I like woke up in, in like the middle of the night and I saw a clown in like a dark corner staring at me, it just freaked me out every single night. Okay. So I, I'd go with the Easter Bunny. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd go with the stalker that everyone can see because <laughs> then people wouldn't think I was crazy. Right. right. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> That's what we think too. Yeah. <laughs> Plus the clown clown is just creepy. Oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> There's nothing nothing but. A, creepy clown. Yeah. We really want to thank you guys for joining us, telling us about your film. It's called She Walks the Woods. It's available now on Amazon Prime. Can they buy it as well? Are you selling this or is it only available for streaming? Yeah. Uh, 
Um, I think I think you can buy it on Prime. I know you can rent it for sure. You can we'll, definitely buy it. Yeah, buy it. Okay. you can buy it. Okay, you can on buy Prime. it on Prime. And then it'll be coming out uh, on some other streaming platforms over the next few months. And then in about three or four months, we'll have um, Blu-rays and DVDs available as well. And the Blu-rays you'll want to pick up if you like the film because uh, we do have two different commentaries on it and uh, like a 30 or 40 minute long making of feature on the Blu-rays. Okay. Awesome. Where can we find you on yeah. social media? If you want to keep up with our films and, and what we're doing as a pair, yeah. uh, follow us at Cult Classic Horror on everything. Unless you're on Twitter, follow us at CC Horror. Yeah, then and anywhere else, you can find me at Scotty Bone and S C O T T Y B O H N E N. Yeah, same with me at Danny Bone. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for your time today. Good luck with your next project. It's just around the corner, and uh, we hope that you yeah. have a great time filming that. And I, I, by the synopsis you read, I'm looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, guys. We appreciate you having us. Thanks, Elizabeth. Have a great day, guys. You too. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Our thanks to Danny and Scotty for being on the show today. Go on out and get She Walks the Woods on Amazon Prime and look for that special Blu-ray edition coming out soon with a lot of behind-the-scenes footage. Well, you know that's not going to happen, but okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to let you tell them, but Elizabeth, after I sent her the link to the movie, refused to watch it. She goes, yeah. you know I'm not watching yeah, this. Yeah, and there's not a snowball's chance I'm watching that horror <laughs> film. Yeah, so he was like, could you pre, you know, pre-watch this film before we do the podcast so that you can intelligently talk to the boys? No, no, I cannot. But she sounded intelligent, right? Yeah, because you know how I feel about horror films. There's just not a snowball's chance. I really I'm, tried. I'm going to watch I thought this. this was my in yep, to get not, you hooked. Not going to happen. Well, sorry. Anyway. I'm sure it's a lovely film, boys. Nick tells me it is, but there's no way I'm watching it. <laughs> Guys, we have a very sad, lonely Patreon over at patreon.com slash fan counters, or it might be fan counters live. I forgot. I haven't been there in a while. But if you want to check that out and donate to the show, we'd appreciate it. And next week, we've got another celebrity guest. Yeah. We're talking about politics. Uh, sort of. Okay. Not because we don't really do that on the show, but. Um, We're pretty neutral people. <laughs> there is a very special guest that's joining us next week. Okay. So tune in. We'd love to have you back, and we'll see you next week. All right, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye.